He has all the power in the world, all the power. And that same power that opened Jesus' tomb and raised him from the dead will open the hopeless prison doors that are holding you back in life today. Jesus is the real power that gives us hope. The reason for our hope. Friends, if there's one thing that you and I need today in our life, it is hope. It is hope. If you're thinking that your life is hopeless and you can't handle your situation, friends, don't quit. Don't give up because there is hope. Listen carefully because our message about the resurrection is all about hope. You see, Jesus himself is our hope. He is the hope who brings life to us when we feel like we can't go on living. I want to focus on just two questions. Just two questions. The first question is, what does the resurrection mean? And the second question is, why does the resurrection matter? Two questions. And my prayer is that the answers to these questions will not just fill your minds, but that these answers will transform your life forever. Friends, what does the resurrection mean? A lot of people will say, well, I believe in the resurrection. I just don't understand it. That's what they'll say. The resurrection is more than an accepted historical fact. It's more than that. It was not done in secret. The whole city of Jerusalem heard about Jesus' rising from the grave. And the later the whole Roman Empire knew that Jesus rose from the dead. This was real news. You know, if CNN and Fox News was there, I'm sure they would cover it live. This was real news. There are many historical references where it talks about how Jesus met with people. He met with them, he touched them, he talked with them. After he rose from the dead, he even cooked breakfast for his disciples. I wonder what Jesus' cooking tastes like. He also met with over 500 people. People there saw Jesus physically, not just spiritually, but they saw him physically. So what does the resurrection mean? It means Jesus is alive. Friends, because he is alive, he proved his claim to be God. He proved his claim. In John chapter 11, verse 25, look what it says. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Jesus declared this to the people, and he made other declarations. As a matter of fact, some of the things that he said were outrageous. He also said, I and the Father are one. I am the only way to heaven. I am the light of the world. A lot of people would say that Jesus is a good teacher. But do you know what? Jesus claimed to be more than a good teacher. For example, what if I would go around and teach people good moral values? I teach people truths. And people would say, wow, Joby, you're such a good teacher. But what if I went on and started saying to people, I'm God. I am God. Would I still be a good teacher? You see, a good teacher would never lie. Jesus was either who he said he was or he was the biggest liar or lunatic who ever lived. One day, Jesus went into the temple and he cleared out all the money changers because the money changers turned the temple into a, into a change, a flea market. Jesus went in and he drove them out and they all asked, what right and authority do you have to do this? And Jesus answered them, John chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. 
Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews therefore said, it took 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? He went on, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had spoken. He claimed to be God, and his resurrection proves to us that claim is real. Jesus went on and said to his people, he said to his disciples, I am the way, continue, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. This is a very exclusive, powerful claim that Jesus was making. I want you to circle in your Bibles the word the, three times, huh? The way, the truth, and the life. When Jesus said he is the way, he wasn't saying he's one of the ways. He wasn't saying I'm a good way. No, he was saying I am the way and the only way. Then Jesus says, I am the truth. I'm the truth. What he was saying here, well, let me ask you. You heard, have you heard people say all roads lead to God? Have you heard that? All roads lead to God. Think about that. That's nonsense. That's like me saying to you, I can call any, any number on my cell phone and I will reach your home. No way. You have only one number for your home. But that's what people think. Friends, when Jesus said, I am the truth, he was saying that I don't tell lies, I don't deceive, or I don't give fake news. Many people today, they profess to teach the truth, but oftentimes it's just their opinion. Jesus claimed to be God. Jesus is the truth. And then Jesus said, I am the life. I am the life. Many people today are looking for a life of fulfillment. People are, are looking for a long and happy life. Well, that's what they want. But Jesus claims that he is the life. He is the one that brings life, real life, eternal life. He says, no one comes to the Father but through me. Friends, this is his exclusive claim because he alone died for all mankind. And therefore, because of that, he speaks with authority. Even if people don't believe that Jesus is who he said he is, it doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change it. God came to this earth in the form of a man, Jesus, so that we would come to know who God is like. Now remember, Jesus' message is exclusive because he is the only name that is given for salvation. But at the same time, it is inclusive, meaning everyone in the world can call upon his name. What's the application for us? Today, friends, have you settled in your heart the truth that Jesus is God? Friends, today, do you depend on Jesus' power to handle your situations? Or are you struggling, trying to take care of things with your own power, which you don't have? Whose power are you depending on? I want you to put yourself in the shoes of a Roman soldier who killed Jesus. Think about this. This was witnessed publicly by hundreds of people as you executed Jesus. They all see him die. And then you bury him, you put a stone over the grave, you put guards to, to protect the, the grave, and then three days later, Jesus is walking in the streets. How would you feel if, if you're walking as a guard and all of a sudden you see him pass you by? Wouldn't that be crazy? Well, what did the women who went to the tomb early that morning, what were they told about Jesus? Look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 and 6. But the angel said to the women, 
Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said he would. Can you highlight this in your Bibles? Just as he said he would. Jesus, he rose from the dead just as he promised. When he makes a promise, you can make sure that he will keep it. Many people today, many people make promises they cannot keep. But with Jesus, it's different. Jesus proves his promises by what he does. Jesus can always be trusted. He is exactly who he said he is, and he will always do what he says. That's our Jesus. The application to us is this. Are you trusting in Jesus' promise to handle your situation and crisis today? Are you trusting in his promises? So what does the resurrection mean? Jesus is alive. He proved his claim to be God. He fulfilled his promises. And he showed his divine powers. Maybe some of you sitting there are saying, so what? So what? Fake news is everywhere. Friends, there is one who you can believe. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Let's answer the second question. The second question is, why does the resurrection matter? Why does the resurrection matter? What difference does it make? We're talking about truth that transforms our lives. And so you might be asking yourself the question, what does it matter to me today in my life with all the things I'm going through? Friends, because Jesus proved his claim to be God, because he showed his divine powers, because he fulfilled his promises, Jesus is almighty. Can you all say that? Jesus is almighty, yes. And because he's almighty, he forgives my past. Can you say that? He forgives my past. And this is great news, friends. This is great news. In the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 14, look what it says. He has forgiven all our sins and canceled every record of the debt we owed. Christ has done away with it by nailing it to the cross. Think about this, friends. This is Jesus' pardon program for us. It says, he nailed it to the cross. He was innocent, and yet he paid for our sins. He was innocent. That means we don't have to pay for it. Jesus was nailed to the cross. Therefore, we don't have to keep nailing ourselves to hopelessness, to fear, to doubt, to despair. He wants to forgive your past. He wants to forgive your past. Jesus wants to, look at this, cancel every record of the debt we owed. Your sins against him, your sins against others, your emotional debt, your relational debt, your spiritual debt, canceled, canceled, canceled. That's the good news. You see, Jesus, because he's almighty, our past can be forgiven. You know, if you grew up in my generation, there was a toy that we often played with. It was called an Etch-a-Sketch. Are you familiar with that? Huh? Etch-a-Sketch. Oh, I just happen to have my Etch-a-Sketch here. Yeah. This is the, the iPad of before. You know? And it's better than iPad. You know why? Because there's no batteries. Hindi lang yan. No Wi-Fi required. Yeah. How do you use it? You see these two knobs? You go up and down, sideways, and you draw pictures. You use your creative mind, and you draw pictures. And you, you just imagine things, and it comes out here. And you know, if you make a mistake, what do you do? If you want to start over, you just shake it. You know, you turn it around, and then it's a clean slate. That's how this works. In our life today, we have many different sins. Many different sins. And we think we're hopeless. But you see, friends, Jesus' death covers all our sins with his precious forgiveness. And so we can have a clean slate. 
I want to show you God's etch a sketch verse from the Bible in John chapter, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Let's read this together. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What's the application to us? Friends, has guilt paralyzed you? Are you today filled with the emotional garbage of sin in your life that you can't move forward? Remember, the good news is that Jesus forgives a repentant heart and he sets you free. He transforms your life. Jesus Christ did not come to rub your sin in. He came to rub your sin out. Amen. Yes. John chapter 3 verse 17 tells us, For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. Yes, He wants to change you. He wants to help you. He wants to give you a new life, a clear conscience, a great beginning. And that's the truth that transforms lives. What? Why does the resurrection matter? Jesus is almighty. He forgives my past and he controls my present. He controls my present. I talk to a lot of people and many people share their heartache. They say, you know what? Today, I feel powerless. I feel powerless over my situation. I feel powerless over my marriage. I feel powerless over my habit of pornography. I feel powerless over my debt. I feel powerless over my children. I feel powerless over my work. I can't manage my work and on and on. They say my life is out of control. Are you saying that somehow in some way today? What you need is a power that's greater than your own. And God wants you to avail of his power. Ephesians chapter 1 Verse 20 says this, how incredibly great is his power to help those who believe him. The same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Friends, do you realize what this power is? This is the same power that enabled Jesus to rise from the dead. That's the power that's going to help you rise from your situations, from your crisis. The same resurrection power of Jesus 2,000 plus years ago is available to all who believe him. You cannot control your present. I cannot control my present. But it doesn't matter if we can't control our present. It doesn't matter because even though we're out of control, friends, it's not out of Jesus' control. He is in perfect control, and we have access to Jesus' power to face our trials. No problem is too big for him to handle. No situation is beyond his power. We need to turn it over to him. You see, Jesus is not saying to us, you're ready for anything through the power of positive thinking. No. He's not saying you're ready for anything when you psych yourself up. No, what he is saying is you are ready for anything through the strength of Christ who lives in you. Why does the res resurrection matter? Jesus is almighty. He forgives my past. He controls my present. He secures my future. Oh, friends, this is beautiful. Someone wisely said this. He said, if you live each day as if it was your last Someday, you'll most certainly be right. The fact is, everybody will have to face death one day. And you know what? We all have this deep, eternal longing to ask ourselves, what's going to happen? Where will I go when I die? Friends, listen, we're going to spend more time in the life after than this life we're living in. The life we're living in is just one centimeter of a kilometer, of an eternal kilometer of life. 
This life that we're living in, this is the preschool of the eternity to come. I like how someone once said, the Bible is our basic instruction before leaving earth. Make sure that you read it before you leave. Friends, the Bible's description of heaven is unimaginable. It's more than a paradise. If you read Revelation chapter 21, you will see that heaven is perfection. It, is, it has total peace, total joy, total love, total perfection. No sin, no mistakes, no tears, no evil, no corruption, and more and more. It's perfect in every way. And only perfect people can go to heaven. And I think, what about us? Because none of us is perfect. How will we get to heaven? We've all messed up our lives. Well, the only way that the Bible says that you can go to heaven is if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That guarantees you your ticket to heaven. Establishing a relationship with him. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Let me tell you a story of this father who brought his son to an amusement park filled with rides for his birthday. He told his son, invite your, your best six friends. So his son invited six friends. And when they got there, the father bought a whole roll of tickets. And so for every ride, the father gave his son one ticket and then six tickets to the other boys. They went from ride to ride to ride. By the end of the day, they got to the Ferris wheel. And as he gave the ticket to his son and the six friends, he noticed there was another one, another boy, not part of the, the six. And he says, who are you? And the little boy said, I'm Johnny. I'm your son's new friend. He said you would give me a ticket. <laughs> Let me ask you, do you think the father gave him a ticket? Absolutely. Yes. When you and I meet God, we should be able to say to him, God, I know your son, Jesus Christ. He said that you would let me into heaven. Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 3, this is the way to have eternal life, by knowing the only true God and Jesus Christ, the one he sent to earth. The Bible says that Jesus has already paid the price. He's already paid for your way to heaven. This is the truth that transforms. What's the application to us today? Make sure that you have a close relationship with God to get into heaven. A Christian is not somebody who accepts religion. A Christian is one who has a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. He wants to have a relationship with you. You know, a lot of people try to get to heaven in many different ways. Some people try salvation by sincerity. Have you heard that? Yeah. They say, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you are sincere. Friends, that's fake news. Think about it. If tomorrow I believe with all my heart that I'm a heart surgeon, would you allow me to operate on your heart? Yes or no? No? I'm glad you said no. Because even if I said I, can, I believe I'm a heart surgeon, I cannot do a heart transplant. I would not be able to keep you alive. Just think that one through. You can be sincere and be sincerely wrong. There are some people today who think salvation by good works. By good works. Well, if they say, if I do all these good things... I'll be able to remove my sins and earn my way to heaven. If I could work, if all of us could work our way to heaven, then Jesus should not have died a cruel and agonizing death on the cross. It's like saying to God, God, what Jesus did on the cross was meaningless, worthless, because I can get to heaven on my own. There are people who say that they can get to heaven by rituals, salvation by ritual. This is fake news. They say, you know, I'll follow all the rules and rituals of the church. I'll even get baptized. Again, fake news. Why? Because 
You can get baptized in the ocean and all the fish can know your first name, but it won't make a difference. It won't make a difference. Believing that rituals can save us means that we don't believe that Jesus' death was sufficient and satisfactory. Think about this. How many rituals do you need to perform in order to be saved? Rituals are human acts that can never remove or, or cancel our sins. How about this? Salvation by heritage. Have you heard that? My mother and my grandmother are devout Christians, therefore, diba? it doesn't make sense. Fake news. So what if, you, if they're also Christians? Friends, it's like saying, for example, since I'm related to Manny Pacquiao, I'm going to be a great boxer as well. No way. You've got to really work hard with discipline to be a champion. To be a Christian, you must surrender your life and make a personal choice to give your life to Jesus. My favorite of all is this one, salvation by comparison, right? They say, I'm better than so-and-so. And you might be able to say you're better than me, and I don't doubt it. But you see, God is not judging us based on me or anyone else. You can say, oh, I'm better than Hitler. You know, that's like saying I'm better than, than I can run faster than my grandmother. It doesn't mean anything. You see, God doesn't judge us based on the life of other people. It's either in faith in Jesus Christ or nothing. How about this one? Salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus alone. Friends, this is the real news. Yes, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved. Grace is God's gift, the gift of God. You've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Even your faith God gives you. It's not as a result of works or heritage, or rituals, or comparison, or anything else, so that no one may boast. Trusting in Jesus Christ for his death and the forgiveness of your sins is the way to eternal life. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, it says, and let's read this together. We have been born again into a life full of hope through Christ rising from the dead. The resurrection. Why? To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Eternity is yours. It's reserved for you. Who are perfected by the power of God through faith. Circle the word hope. Circle the word hope. Friends, hope means that you don't have to fear anything. Because Jesus is your hope. You don't have to fear death anymore. This verse reminds us that the resurrection of Jesus grants us a living hope which is reserved for us in heaven. What is your source of hope? What is your source of hope? Jesus is our hope because he gives us peace with God. He gives us peace with God. All of us came here this morning for different reasons. For some of you, it's the thing to do. For others, it's an obligation. For others, it's a tradition. For some of you, maybe your friend invited you here and that friend really loves you. You came here for many different reasons, but can I tell you, you are not here by accident. God brought you here because he wants to say to you, I love you. He wants to say, I, you matter to him. I care for you. I know what you're going through. Don't give up. Put your hope in me. Friends, Jesus Christ wants to have a relationship with you. Your background may be Buddhist, Baptist, Catholic, Jew, Mormon, Protestant. I mean, Iglesia. It could be whatever it is. You see, God doesn't mind what your background is. God doesn't want you to focus on religion. He wants you to focus on a relationship. We need to come to God with an open heart, saying, God, here I am. I put my total trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of my sins and my salvation. Some of you have been close to God, but in the past few months, you've been drifting away. 
God is saying to you, come home, come back to me. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 7 says, with all my love, I will welcome you again. No matter what is happening in your life, God wants you to come back to him. Friends, you matter to God and that's why he's brought you here today. The reason for our hope, Jesus is alive. Jesus is almighty. Would you like to have God's power to handle the situations in life? Would you like to have your future secured in heaven? The reason for our hope, Jesus is alive and Jesus is almighty. Let me invite those of you who have never given your life to the Lord to pray and make this prayer your prayer to God. Bow your heads and close your eyes if you will and say, Lord Jesus, today I repent of all my sins and I put my total trust in you alone to save me. I want to commit my life to you now. I will follow you for the rest of my life. Thank you for, giving, for forgiving me of all my sins. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me and rising to prove that you are the Son of God. Lord, you are my Savior, and I give you my life. I pray this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. And for those of you here who want to recommit your life, who are going through difficult times and your life is overwhelmed, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I want to give you all my worries, all my problems that I'm facing today. I need you because only you can do the impossible. I want to go back into your loving embrace. I commit to walk in obedience and faith. Jesus, you are my hope. Your presence is my strength and your power is my peace. I pray this in Jesus' most precious name, amen and amen.